All right, welcome to our second pre-lab video this semester for the 12-11 lab here at North Georgia. <clears throat> so this is going to be our, our second actual experiment of the semester, but it is lab four on our CSC pub, and that's going to be the physical separation of a mixture. So for this particular experiment, kind of our, our main goal or kind of what's happening is we're going to be providing you a white powder that's a combination of multiple different compounds, uh, and your goal in the experiment is to actually separate those three compounds. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the terminology involved with these kind of processes. Uh, and as a starting point, just identifying kind of the terms you see you can see in the title here for the experiment. So mixtures, you probably talked about this term at least a little bit in lecture. Uh, a mixture is simply just a combination of multiple different compounds that when you've kind of combined them all together, they haven't reacted with one another. So they're still their same uh, individual compounds that they were before you put them all together. <clears throat> and then our goal, like we said, is going to be trying to separate our mixture. Uh, into those individual compounds. Uh, and there's a lot of times in kind of real world applications where this becomes necessary. Uh, for instance, if you're trying to extract like a valuable metal, it usually is going to be found in an ore of some kind with other components. And you want to be able to isolate that metal by itself. Uh, or for instance, if you're synthesizing new pharmaceutical drugs, uh, a lot of times you need to be able to isolate your specific product and make sure there's no impurities or other unintended side products that are also there so that purification and extraction process is extremely important. <clears throat> uh, likewise, desalination of water, uh, just being able to try and like take salt water and make it drinkable or usable for other purposes. Uh, all of these are different examples of trying to do separations. Uh, and one of the things that we're going to kind of focus on also in this lab is kind of just what types of properties are used to be able to do these separations. Because uh, usually you're always going to kind of, kind of almost exploit some sort of physical or chemical property of the substances that you're trying to separate uh, and basically exploit the differences that the different compounds have in some of those properties. So today's experiment, we're mainly going to be focusing on physical means, uh, whereas like chemical means would be if you can do a reaction where one component reacts and others don't, that's maybe a way to try and separate things. Uh, today's experiment though, we're going to focus on kind of the physical side where we're not really altering our in, uh, involved compounds in any way. They're going to stay with kind of their same chemical identities. So this means separating things in their physical properties. There, there's two really common ways this is usually done. Uh, one is through solubility and being able to kind of just base, uh, filter and separate your products based on the physical state things are in. Uh, that's the one we're going to be taking a look at today in the lab. Uh, another common one also kind of involving physical state changes is by boiling things. So if you have a mixture of a bunch of liquids, uh, being able to evaporate one liquid easier than another through a process called distillation is something that's commonly used also, although that's a process that tends to show up a lot more in organic laboratories. Uh, for our GenCrim lab that we're going to be looking at today, we're really going to be focusing on that solubility and filtration part. Uh, and so some other terms to kind of be aware of, when you see that term solubility, we're usually talking about really kind of how well something dissolves. So we're looking at the physical properties of the different components in our mixture, and we're kind of taking advantage of the fact that if we add a particular liquid, only one of those compounds will hopefully dissolve in that particular liquid, if we know a little bit about the compounds that are there, and if we know a little bit about the liquid that we're actually adding. <clears throat> so for our particular experiment, uh, the three different compounds that we're going to have in our mixture are going to be acetaminophen, sucrose, and calcium carbonate. Now, don't worry too much about these names and kind of try and remember exactly what these things look like or the chemical formulas. It's not something we'd expect you to know at this point in general chemistry. Uh, outside of the, the calcium carbonate, you should probably know how to name at this point uh, based on just kind of some of the naming conventions that most of you have probably been covering in lecture or covering this week. <clears throat> now, what's important about all three of these compounds is they have different kind of solubility trends or patterns. So acetaminophen, for instance, is soluble in warm butanol. Uh, or you'll see it labeled probably in the, the lab read as 1-butanol. But what's important about that is our other two compounds are not. Neither one of them are soluble in warm butanol. So when we have a mixture of all three of these things in one as one kind of combined powder, if we add hot butanol, the acetaminophen should dissolve in it. That's what it means to basically be soluble, is if you add that liquid, that particular compound is going to dissolve in it. <clears throat> and so the acetaminophen will dissolve in the warm butanol, but the sucrose and calcium carbonate won't. And so now if we remove that liquid butanol that has acetaminophen dissolved in it, we have effectively removed one of the components of the mixture. And now if we want our acetaminophen back, we can evaporate the butanol, and now we can have our acetaminophen back as a solid. And then we can basically repeat kind of a similar process to try and separate sucrose and calcium carbonate by using water instead. Uh, sucrose is soluble in warm water, so adding warm water to the sucrose and calcium carbonate mixture that remains 
Uh, we can dissolve the sucrose. The calcium carbonate doesn't really dissolve very well in water. Uh, and so now we have a way to kind of separate the sucrose in a similar fashion of how we got the acetaminophen out. Uh, and so we'll have kind of two different steps where we'll be basically be doing kind of two different filtrations uh, to remove two of our three products, or sorry, two of our three components for our mixture. <clears throat> and then once we've removed those two, then everything that's left ideally should just be calcium carbonate at that point in time. So general kind of outline here, kind of a procedure, and this is uh, kind of the same flow chart that you'll see presented in your lab reading. And so we have kind of our, our initial powder that we start out with. It's the combination of acetaminophen and sucrose and the calcium carbonate. And ideally what should happen is as we add our hot butanol uh, to our whole mixture, like we said before, our acetaminophen is fairly soluble in the hot butanol. And so it's going to dissolve in the hot butanol basically around two parts. When we say soluble, this is basically whatever is going to be in the liquid. The insoluble is just whatever powder is still left sitting on your basically on your, basically on your funnel and your filter paper. So first step, adding the hot butanol, acetaminophen is going to dissolve and be part of the liquid. And then we have our other two components, the sucrose and the calcium carbonate, still just sitting on our funnel. Uh, the liquid that comes through, we're going to collect. And then if we basically separate that off and we go and evaporate all the butanol, now we'll have our acetaminophen isolated by itself. And then we're going to do the same process basically to our remaining powder by adding hot water. And we're going to see that now it's the sucrose that's soluble in the water. So the sucrose is going to dissolve and be in our liquid phase. And then we can isolate it again the same way, evaporating all the water off. And then whatever's left after we add the hot water should just be our calcium carbonate. Uh, and how we're going to kind of check to see what's uh, basically what's left and make sure it is calcium carbonate is we're going to add just a little bit of hydrochloric acid uh, to our reaction. And what should and you should observe if you're looking kind of at a reaction down here, this is, these are the products that we're going to make from calcium carbonate. And probably the most important thing right here is we're going to see this gas, right? So we see this gas. Typically, when gases are produced in a reaction that has liquid components, you're probably going to see a decent amount of bubbling happen. So hopefully, visually, what you should see is some sort of bubbling when you add your hydrochloric acid, this uh, HCl, uh, to the calcium carbonate. Uh, and you should see some of that actual white solid, again, kind of dissolve or disappear uh, when you add that acid. So those are kind of the main things we're going to be looking at. Again, hopefully isolating all three of our compounds. And if our final white powder looks like it dissolves really well in the hydrochloric acid, then it's a pretty good indication that what we have left should hopefully just be the calcium carbonate. Because the sucrose and acetaminophen, while they dissolve in those other liquids, they aren't going to do that same reaction with hydrochloric acid. And so they're not going to be producing any gases or causing any bubbling. So if our last product uh, is going to be an awful lot of bubbling, we add HDL, that's a good sign. It means we should have hopefully just the calcium carbonate there that's left. Now, for this lab, there are a couple of quick procedural notes and changes that I want to make people aware of. <clears throat> so for one, uh, we aren't going to be using Bunsen burners uh, in this experiment. We're actually kind of cutting down on things. Uh, we are actually uh, both kind of the TAs and the instructors. We're going to preheat all of your evaporating dishes just in the ovens. Uh, and so we'll have those basically preheated and ready to go so that you can basically start this experiment in step five. Uh, we will be using Bunsen burners in our next experiment, but you don't have to worry about those for this week. Uh, we'll just be using hot plates for any of the heating that we do for the rest of the lab. <clears throat> so the other thing too, just as you're doing the experiment, I think things that people kind of just get caught up in, you try, people try to read the individual steps maybe too closely and get and kind of lose sight of, I think, just the big picture. And really the big picture, if you think about kind of that flow chart, it's not overly complicated. We're basically we're just going to have our white powder. We want to add hot butanol first, and that's going to hopefully remove our acetaminophen. And then once we've kind of taken the acetaminophen and, and uh, the butanol away, now we're going to add hot water to what's left, and that's now going to separate the sucrose and the calcium carbonate. That's basically the only real steps that we're actually doing here. Uh, you do want to make sure you add those liquids in the correct order. So it has to be butanol first and then water, or you actually won't effectively separate your acetaminophen and sucrose. They actually will both dissolve in hot water, and now, we, now we're not actually fully separating everything like we intended. Uh, while you add your liquids for your filtration, and there will be a, a physical demonstration of this uh, at kind of the end of this video, when you add your two liquids, it's probably best to do it in two portions. Uh, and so that you can give a little bit of time for your solid to kind of start dissolving uh, and then add a little bit more of that liquid that you're adding to try and dissolve uh, the particular product you're trying to isolate. Uh, just because you need to give it a little bit of time for everything to kind of be able to mix around well uh, so that basically all of your powder gets exposed to the liquid you're trying to dissolve the particular product in or a component in. Uh, and that way, hopefully, all of your particular component that's there does dissolve. So like in the instance of like when we add our butanol, if we want all of the acetaminophen dissolve, to dissolve, 
want to make sure that that butanol is kind of covered and mixed with all of the solid that was there, at least a little bit, so that there's been a chance for the acetaminophen to dissolve. If you dump all of it in at once, it might not get all of it. Uh, and so do pay attention. I know the demonstration video when it gets to that part does kind of dump in all of the liquid at once. Uh, but you should probably do it in kind of just too small or kind of break it up into a half and half portion uh, when you're adding your hot liquid. Uh, but do just try to make sure that the liquid's still hot when you go to add it. Because uh, if that liquid's not hot anymore, it's possible that maybe all the acetaminophen or all the sucrose uh, won't dissolve the way it's supposed to. Uh, the other big note, waste collection. Uh, nothing from this lab goes down the sink, so we will be collecting the waste. Uh, you'll have your lab instructors kind of point to the uh, waste container in the hood, reminding everyone that all the waste is basically going to be collected in that container uh, at the end of the experiment. Uh, probably the only last thing I'll add here before I get to a quick demonstration video, uh, on that flow chart you did see, uh, see that we use hydrofluoric acid. It's a very small amount, uh, it's at a relatively low concentration, but it is a strong acid. It is something that if you do spill in your bare skin, you will probably feel it burn a little bit, or at least kind of feel a bit of a tingling sensation. Now, if that happens, don't panic. Uh, as long as you just kind of quickly notice that, hey, I've spilled this on my hands. If you go wash your hands in a sink uh, for just a minute or two, uh, it's not going to cause any kind of real problems. Uh, but it is just something to kind of be aware of. If you're doing that step and all of a sudden your, some of your fingers, your hand, or you feel any skin that uh, has kind of like a tingling sensation to it, uh, just make sure you get that washed off good in the sink. All right, welcome to a quick demonstration of our physical separations of a mixture experiment here for 1211. So this experiment, we're going to be doing something called the filtration. So all filtrations, and we'll do a few of them throughout the course of the semester, are focused on separating a solid and a liquid. And we're pretty much always going to be using filter paper to do that. So what we end up doing in that process is we're going to take our filter paper, we're basically going to have it set up in a funnel. We'll take our whole mixture of both a solid and a liquid, pour over the filter paper. And what happens is the filter paper is going to let the liquid pass through. It's going to catch off the solid. And now we've separated our different phases of things. Uh, usually this lets us isolate like a solid product we're interested in or in today's lab we're actually interested in the liquid that goes through because sometimes that liquid will have things dissolved in it and that's really what we're doing today for our lab. So for our setup for a filtration for our filter paper itself you'll notice it doesn't really fit well just trying to push it down into funnels it's never going to sit very well or uh, really make any kind of good seals to help the filtration happen fastly I'm sorry uh, fast or in an efficient manner. So what we do with the filter paper to kind of get started before we really do anything else uh, so we actually take our filter paper and we're going to fold it in half twice. So here, fold it in half once. I'm going to fold it in half a second time. And it looks almost kind of like a kind of a pseudo triangle shape. And what we're going to do is notice if I have it that kind of at the actual point and I have the curved on top, on this top part where it's curved, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for not the exact middle, but just next to one edge. And I'm basically going to pull it open so that I now have kind of this conal shape for my filter paper. You may have to open it up a little bit at the bottom so that you actually get kind of that full cone shape. Now if I take that cone and set in my funnel, it's going to set a little better, but you notice it doesn't really sit perfectly. So to get it to kind of grip the sides of the funnel so that we get a little bit better seal, it just kind of holds itself in place a little bit better, we can take a little bit of our liquid that we're going to be using to pass through the filter paper, and we can squirt it along kind of some of the edges here of the uh, filter paper. And that will help the filter paper kind of now sit in place and stick to the funnel. It'll make a little bit better seal. And it also will allow when we go to take our liquid and pour it in there from our mixture, that liquid is now going to be going straight through the filter paper. Uh, the first bits of liquid usually add to filter paper just get absorbed into the paper. They don't really pass through very much. Uh, so this kind of prevents any of our liquid, if we need it for our experiment or we want to get that liquid back, prevents it from getting kind of lost into the filter paper itself. All right, once our filter paper now has been wetted, is what we typically call that process, so that it's stuck now to our funnel a little bit better, now we're gonna go ahead and add our mixture to it. So for some labs later this semester, that'll be like an actual solution with the solid in it already. For uh, this week's lab, it's just gonna be the actual white powder itself that has our three different components in it. So we'll go ahead and add that to our funnel. And now if we want to, we can go ahead and take our, our funnel and adjust a little bit so that the tip of the funnel is actually down, kind of touching the edge of our evaporating dish. That we're going to be collecting everything in and this will also just kind of help make that filtration process happen a little bit faster because if you're not careful on some of these filtrations they can take a long time for all the liquid to pass through the filter paper all right so once we have all this set up now we're ready to go ahead and add basically our, our hot liquid to our uh, mixture and so for our procedure the first liquid that we're going to add is hot butanol so we should have had butanol heating up in a hot on a hot plate like this in a water bath and you're gonna to wanna to use test tube clamps like this so that you can grab the test tube or so you don't have to grab it with your bare hands when it's hot. Uh, and then what you're gonna go ahead and do is you're gonna go ahead and take that liquid and don't waste too much time while the liquid is still warm. 
you want to go ahead and pour it all over your solid that's inside of your funnel. Now, when you do that, you should see a good bit of your solid actually dissolve. And if you need to, if you don't feel like all of your solid really got fully kind of covered by the liquid you added, you can get a little bit more of the butanol, heat it up, and add some more as well. Uh, but the more butanol that you add, the more you will have to evaporate off later, so it takes longer. Uh, so try to just be kind of diligent. The amount of butanol you have in there should be about five milliliters that you've heated up. Try to get all of that added relatively quickly while it's still warm, so and hopefully get all of the solid kind of covered so it's at least coming into contact with the butanol so that you can hopefully dissolve all of the product that you should have dissolved. Uh, because out of our mixture, there's only one compound that should dissolve in the butanol, so we want to make sure all, all of our powder gets exposed to the butanol so that compound dissolves through. And then what's going to happen is once all of the liquid is finished passing through our funnel for our filtration here, in this case, we're going to take our evaporating dish or where we've kind of collected all of what we call the filtrate, the liquid that's coming through that filtration, and we're going to go ahead and take that evaporating dish and now put on a hot plate. And if we evaporate off all the liquid, there should be a solid that gets left behind. That's the compound that we've now removed from our initial mixture. Uh, and once we've done that once, the rest of our experiment is basically just doing all of that a second time uh, to now remove a second product by adding hot water instead of the hot butanol. And now we've got a way that we can separate all three components of our mixture just based on their, their physical solubilities. Uh, when you are done with this, we will have some kind of waste instructions. Uh, all this stuff can't just get washed down the sink. Uh, so we will have some kind of waste instructions. All of the actual final products, once you've evaporated off the liquids from your evaporating dishes, we're going to wash those into a waste container that we'll have set up in one of our boats. Uh, but those are kind of the main aspects of what to expect for this experiment, kind of what things are going to look like. Uh, try not to get bogged down in the word-for-word -word descriptions in the lab procedure. Um, it is fairly well written, so I don't think it's that, that bad to go ahead and follow just the individual written steps. But think just kind of big picture. Your main things for doing your filtration, you're just having a liquid and a solid that here we're putting in and we're trying to separate. And in this case, we're really trying to use our liquid to dissolve some of that solid. And we're just doing basically that same process twice. Once with hot butanol to dissolve our acetaminophen, the second time with our water to dissolve our sucrose. And then hopefully there is some white powder left behind at the end of everything that's gonna be our calcium carbonate. And we'll be able to eventually get masses of all those different pieces and kind of see uh, what our overall starting mixture, uh, mixture looked like in terms of uh, the ratios of the different compounds that were there.